even with that, it was still remarkable, especially for a 10-year-old, that you could write a program in BASIC, let's say, or Fortran, and actually this machine would sort of take your idea and it would, tr it would sort of execute your idea and give you back some results. A clip from the 1996 high-tech documentary Triumph of the Nerds. Robert Cringley made that film based on his book Accidental Empires. Only a few minutes of the Steve Jobs interview used in that film. Bob is going to show the rest of it uh, next week. This is the famous lost Steve Jobs interview. Well, even better, it's the found Steve Jobs interview. Found in a garage in, in Britain in on London, VHS yeah. tape. Yeah, what happened was we made uh, Triumph of the Nerds, a three-hour miniseries in 1995 and 96, and I interviewed 125 people, the most important 125 people in the PC industry at the time, and we lost every single tape when they were being shipped after we finished the show from London to the U.S. for a sequel we were working on. You had done it for British television. And we did it for originally. Channel 4 yes. in the U.K. and PBS. And, and so we were doing the sequel, we shipped the tapes, and they disappeared in shipping. And it turned out, you know, 16 years later, Steve Jobs dies, and the director, Paul Sen, in London, thought, well, you know, I think I kept a tape of just the Jobs interview. So he went in his garage, and he looked around and found it. And the, called me up and said, here, we, you know, I found this tape. What do you think I should do with it? And I asked, how many others did you keep? Because, of course, we thought they were all lost. I hadn't known at all about this. And, and how said, much is Just left? the one. Just Jobs. Had you realized at the time that Steve Jobs was going to, obviously he was a central part of your, your film, that he was going to be that important? You, you, you interviewed, and you said, what, 120 people? 125, and, yeah. and you ended up using a few minutes of Jobs. Yeah, about nine minutes. Uh, uh, in retrospect, did you did you realize what an influence he was going to be uh, you, on American culture? You know, uh, no, I, I certainly didn't. And we painted him in the in the uh, series as being in decline. He'd left Apple. Next was not doing well, and you know Microsoft was ascendant at the time. And that's the way we played it. But I got to tell you something. We did this interview and spent sixty nine minutes talking to Steve, and. At the end of it, the sound man, who doesn't speak up very much about these things, said, I think we just watched history. And your director kept that and interview kept over all the others. And why was that the case? One out of 125. Because Steve was on. He was, uh, you know, we're not used to seeing either it's Steve the Huckster, you know, when he's in his salesman mode, or else it's Steve, you know, cranky geek. Right. Mm -hmm. And and this was this at the beginning he's a little cranky and then he sort of warms up and we're talking about things in the past when he's a kid and 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 it just turned out really great. It's and you, a, you go way back with him, correct? I started working for Apple in 1977. Employee number 12, 12 is that yeah. right? Okay. So, so when did you first meet him? I met uh, Steve Jobs first at a Homebrew Computer Club meeting in, se in oh, spring right. of 77. I helped he and Waz take an Apple I out of Waz's Fiat and uh, got to know him and, and eventually they offered me a job. Had you spoken to him since that interview? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, I'll tell you, the way it goes with Steve is you you don't speak to him, but he speaks to you a lot. And so I, you know, I would go for months and not hear from him, and then I'd hear from him seven times in one day. The last time I heard from him was in August. Well, it's amazing to me that this is going into movie theaters, that this will be played next to you know, Tower Heist. What, what does it say about the environment we're in now? What does it say that about people Tower are interested? Heist? <laughs> uh, 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 fine, Universal Studios property, I might have. That people yes, are thanks, interested Brad. in this interview yes. right now. They are. And, and you know, I, it was found, Paul uh, Sen said, uh, maybe you can put it on your blog for your readers to watch. Well, that would be very 2011. I mean, uh, uh, movie theaters are very... Very new media, but media. I am a very old media guy. Yes. So I asked my readers, you know, what I should do with it. And they all said, of course, give it away. You know, I want it for free. Sure. And, and I thought, well, this is crazy. You know, I'm, I have three kids I have to put through college. So, so I, uh, I thought, well, why not a movie? Why not a theater? And so I, I sent an email to Mark Cuban, who owns the Landmark Theaters, in the middle of the night... It helps if you know Mark Cuban. Mm -hmm. It does. Yes. It does. Uh, in the middle of the night, and in like five minutes, I heard back from him. We had a deal. Well, wow. so wow. clearly the perception of Jobs has changed since that 1995 interview. From where you're sitting, how much did the man change? Was he still the same person that he was during that that lost interview? You know, I heard I, for 30 years people have been saying Steve has changed, which means Steve is nicer than he used to be. And then you get to know him and you find no, Steve hasn't really changed. <laughs> But Steve did change over time in certain ways. It next really taught him how to spend his own money instead of someone else's money. And he learned to run a tight ship. 
because early Apple compared to next compared to later mm -hmm. Apple, there's no comparison. Three different companies. It was very, early very Apple was just right. wild. Right. You know? And so he he learned how to how to make a profit, and 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 then in '91, you know, he got married, and he learned about families and having a family and being a father. And he, at home, was a completely different kind of guy. You know, I used to live in his neighborhood in Palo Alto. And you could walk down the street, stand on the sidewalk, and look into his kitchen and see him doing the dishes. And, you know, it's common. Right. Really, I bet doesn't do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we'll make sure to ask him on that. The, go, go ahead, Katie. It got to the point where Apple was run like a cult. And he was obviously the, the cult leader. Where oh, did yeah. that come from? Did, was there an inkling of that back in 1977? I mean, what? Well, he would have liked to have run it like a cult in 1977. Okay. Absolutely. Um, you know, he, he was the same guy, the same uh, no internal critic. Uh, he would say whatever he felt like saying and do whatever he felt like doing. You know, Scully's success at Apple after Jobs left in 85 was based solely on canceling the projects that Steve was doing that were never going to see the market. Right. He saved 200, he was wasting $200 million a year. Bob, let me jump in and say yeah. John Scully, the CEO who essentially fired Steve Jobs. For those who don't know the history of that. That's Apple. right. Yes. Steve brought Scully into the company and, From then Scully, and Scully betrayed him. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, uh, do, do you break new ground? I mean, Walter Isaacson's got this enormous book. I don't know if you noticed or not. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, do you break new ground with this or is it more just a trip down memory lane? I'll tell you about Walter's book. It's very interesting. He, I talked to him about this and he, and, and, and he said, you know, you helped me a lot. You're all, you're, you're throughout the book. So when it came out, I looked for my name. It's nowhere to be found. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure I'm throughout the book. It's like that Milton Berle joke. You know, yes. I wish, wish I had said that and he said, you will. So, um, uh, Walter, you know, Walter's not an insider. Uh, Walter um, was, was hired by Steve or brought in by Steve to do the job. And I think Steve chose him because of his gravitas, but sure. also because he wasn't, you know, from the inside. And, and, and so, you know, I really enjoyed the book. I, I didn't learn much from it, but I enjoyed it. Well, you and, were there. And, I, I, you know, I was there for a lot of it. And, and still, you know, I think, I think Steve sort of pulled it over on him a little bit. I'm about two-thirds through the way book net. Uh, are Peter's you in it? Through the way book now. Uh, I mentioned in the uh, in the footnotes one of my nice. stories. Um, but we didn't thing, look in the footnotes. <laughs> you got to look at me. I am. You you, I'm sure you are. Actually, one of the things that I took from it is how much a role into his intuition played in guiding Apple, particularly these last ten years. So, what's your perception of the of the you know the the future of the company without Steve there guiding it? Well, the first thing they did was they 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 released that. Well, we have four or five years of, of product. Sure. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, timetables and, and roadmaps available. So we're we're fine. And you know what they are, but every company has that. You've got to plan for that. You know, Moore's Law is going to take effect and something's going to happen. What what I noticed from that was that they didn't say, oh, and by the way, we've got a bunch of new product categories, which we haven't seen. Then, then the next week, they dropped the Apple TV or right. whatever it's going to be, ITV, whatever it will be called. Well, good. That's a new product category. That that buys two to three years right there. But as we all know, Steve was making changes and decisions every step of the way right up to the product announcement. Absolutely. They're not going to have that anymore. They're not. But there are people at Apple who nobody knows about, who Steve worked with and groomed for 25 years to be little Steves. And they're still there. And you'll never hear about them. But I'm sure they're speaking up in loud voices in meetings. What about the general culture of the company? I was at a, a dinner party recently, and I ran into someone who was a fairly high-level Apple employee. And I started asking questions about the company um, and quickly got guilty and, and told him I was a reporter. <laughs> and not only did he quit answering the questions, he quit acknowledging that the questions were being asked. Um, I mean, it is a cult-like atmosphere. Which, and, which yeah. is a very Steve yeah. sort of it, thing. That comes it, from Steve, and yeah. does, does that continue now that he's gone? Well. You, you're the reporter. You tell me. I suspect it will, but probably in a in a lessened right. fashion. Secrecy has been very good to Apple. I think it, it's pretty, it has. Pretty it's well about about it. the they turned it into a marketing tool. I want to come. We have about a minute left. I want to come back to the film for just a second. I saw a screener. I have it. a movie. Uh, you have a movie. Uh, uh, I saw a screener of it, and the thing that struck me is he's less guarded. Uh, he he talks about a teletype and makes the teletype noise. He talks about blue box and starts singing the tones of the of the blue box uh, that, that that gets into AT and T's computers that he and Waz built. It was it was a less guarded, uh, less oh, yeah. polished uh, Steve Jobs. Well, and thank you. 
I did that. <laughs> <laughs> With the skills of your interview. Oh, yeah. Uh, how did you how'd you get Steve Jobs to sing? That can be my last question, Sue. Well, you know, we had 69 minutes. We have 10 here. So yeah. that, there's that. You, so if we went 59 you, more minutes, you'd start oh, singing. I, you know what brand of underwear I yeah, wear. Yeah, fair enough. You know, I'm going to protect the viewer and go ahead and, uh, and, and go to commercial then. Okay. Uh, Bob Grizzly, uh, your film will be out uh, Wednesday in yeah. theaters all over the United States. Press here. We'll be back in a minute.